Hi, my name is Eric J. Miller from Northwestern University's Nuance Center, and we're going to count down the top 12 things we should pay attention to in order to get better looking images for the SEM. A lot of these things will seem very obvious, but if we've overlooked or given some short shrift, they can be, uh, give you some real problems in the image quality department. Number 12, good sample prep or handling. Well, of course you need good sample prep. If your sample is not prepared properly, you're not going to be able to get the information out of it that you need. If your sample is not polished well enough, etched correctly, dehydrated correctly, or coated properly to go into the microscope, you're not going to get good quality data out of your sample. The other part of this is clean and proper handling of the sample. If you're touching the surface of the sample with your bare hands and you expect to get some really pretty pictures inside the electron microscope with that sample now, you are dreaming. If you can visually see the material your fingers deposited when you touch the sample, I guarantee it's visible in the microscope and we'll be covering up structures you wanted to see. Number 11, follow the instructions. Probably two out of three problems that people have with the microscopes in our lab are due to not following the instructions. The instructions in our lab do require knowing one trick in order to make them work correctly. You need to read them. Number 10, find the midpoint in between the two bad points. When you adjust something, you want to find where things are good, right? The problem with the electron microscope is that we cannot always find where things are good. We cannot. Trying to find where things are good will just waste our time and frustrate us. So what do we do instead? Well, while we can't find where things are good, we can always find where things are bad. So we will make an adjustment until we see things are getting worse, whatever worse is depending on what it is you're adjusting. Once I see things get worse, I know I can stop the adjustment in that direction and go back the other way. We should start to see things get a little bit better, but we don't care about where things are good, so we keep going until the image gets worse again. So if I know things are bad here, and I know things are bad here, where are things going to be good at? Of course, right in the middle. So, with every adjustment and every alignment you make in the SEM, you do this. Find the midpoint in between the two bad points. It will make your life so much easier. Number nine, align the aperture. Well, of course you need to align the aperture, right? Right? The objective aperture is hugely important. If it's out of alignment, it will decrease your resolution, it will decrease your current, and it will make your image look bad in a very weird, indistinct way that I can't really describe. If this is off, your images will have problems. Number eight, use the right detector for the job. Not all electron microscopes are equipped with multiple detectors. All of ours are. Sometimes a through the lens detector is not going to tell you what's going on with the topography of your sample, while an in-chamber detector will. A solid state backscatter detector will give you all that great atomic number contrast, but your spatial resolution is going to be terrible. You need to use the right tool for the right job. So choose your detector wisely to get the data you need. Number seven, use the right scan speed. If your sample is charging, your slow scan image is going to have issues. Do not be afraid to try a faster scan or an averaged or frame integrated image. You need to be able to adapt your approach to the sample based on what your sample is doing inside the microscope. Number six, use the right accelerating voltage. The accelerating voltage is highly dependent on your sample and what it is you're going to do with your sample inside the microscope. Sometimes higher voltage is good. Sometimes it's not. The higher the voltage, the better the resolution. But, and there's always a big but, the further the beam will penetrate into the surface of your sample. Under some circumstances, increasing the voltage will give you better resolution. Like with a microscope with a tungsten filament, for example. But as you increase the voltage, at some point your sample will say it's had enough and you'll stop getting most of your signal from the surface of the sample and start getting most of the signal from beneath the surface of the sample. This will cause your surface features to start to disappear as you're imaging below the surface of the sample. So this is all dependent on your sample and what sort of information you need to get out of it. Be flexible enough to change the voltage based on your sample and your needs. Number five, adjust brightness and contrast. What you want out of your image is an area that's black, an area that's white, and as many shades of gray in between as you can get. We don't want areas in the image that are undersaturated black or oversaturated white. If that's happening, we're losing information. The better we adjust the brightness and contrast now, before we take the image, the less we'll have to do later to make it look good. Number four, focus. I mean, this seems obvious, right? If your image is out of focus, it's useless, right? I mean, focus. What is there to explain about focus? Number three, 
Stigmators. So what could be more important than focus? The stigmators. You use them to correct the astigmatism present in the beam, mostly caused by aberrations in the electromagnetic lenses. They make your beam elliptical, so you use the stigmators to make the beam round again. The stigmators are the single most important thing you're going to adjust when you're taking an image, and they are more important than focus. Which doesn't make any sense, but it's true. Number two, stigmators. If you didn't get the hint the first time that the stigmators are super important, here's an example. This is an image with the stigmators properly adjusted. Now here's the same image before the stigmators were adjusted. The focus is the same, the alignments are all the same between these two images. The only difference is the stigmators. Do not ignore the stigmators. Number one, Stigmators! Seriously! If you don't adjust the stigmators correctly, or at all, your image will look terrible. This is not a guess on my part. I know this for a fact. Adjust the stigmators. So to sum up, there is what your microscope is capable of, and then there's what your sample is capable of. With a nice microscope, most of the time we have to settle for what the sample can do. But if you're ignoring any of these things on this list, you have turned things around and are now settling for what the microscope is capable of. And if you're using the wrong detector, the wrong voltage, the aperture is out of alignment, the stigmators were not adjusted, that microscope is not capable of much. If you're having problems getting good images out of our SEMs, make sure you find one of the Epic Lab managers and we'll be sure to help you out. Thanks for watching. Number. Motorcycles. Yeah, motorcycles. More wind. Yay, more wind. From the surface of the sample. What are you doing? <laughs> I just saw a fish jump way out of the water. Oh. Oh, yeah. Okay. With a nice microscope, most of the time, holy cow. <laughs> we should th see things. <laughs> Who wrote this?